Matty, the rivalry with Lee, obviously we've not had too many games between the two clubs in recent years, but how good is it for the Borough to have this sort of game going ahead? Yeah, it's fantastic. I think uh, it's a game that we all enjoy. It's probably one of the fixtures that both clubs would have looked for when the fixture list came out. And obviously that rivals that rivalry has been uh, sat on the back burner for a while, but we get a chance to to reignite it. And I think it's uh, it's particularly exciting because of the quality that Lee have got. I think there's been games in the past between the two clubs where uh, Lee were punching above the weight, but I don't think that's the case at the moment. I think the players and the the staff that Derek and, and Adrian have put together, I think, you know, we know we've got uh, our hands full, but not just in the rivalry and the atmosphere, but by quality of the league team as well. So it should be a fantastic game for everyone involved. Yeah, could this be the best game for years, maybe for over a decade between the two clubs, based on how we started the campaign on yourselves? Let's hope so, but there's been some good ones. There's been some really quality games. I just think, yeah, I think it'll be a. Uh, Rivalry aside, I think this will be an excellent game between the two teams and the players that are on the field. And uh, yeah, I think, it, like I said, rival, without the rivalry and the uh, the lo local, yeah, you know, the rivalry, I think there's just two good teams. Once you work with AG and so you look forward to going up against someone you've worked close with in, in the past. I am, yeah, and there's plenty of there's plenty of uh, uh, friends and ex colleagues in both camps. Obviously, uh, Zach. Uh, PJ's over there as well, uh, so there's plenty of staff, but Lammy in particular is someone that I enjoyed working with and remain good friends and he's someone that I'll forever be indebted to for the trust he put in me and yeah, I think uh, hopefully we can come out on top, but plenty of respect between the two between, between the two clubs and teams. Yeah, you know, you look forward to facing Matthew, of course, vice versa, you saw him obviously building up and he worked from the youth, so you look forward to that, just taking him on now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I played as a player for Wigan at one stage, and I remember coming to Lee to play against Lee, and just the, the the talk that was between not only the players but also the supporters. So that the love hate relationship that's there within the bar, I think it's building nicely as 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 the game on Sky on, on Thursday night, and and I think great for rugby league as well to to see that rivalry. I know we're going to forever have that rivalry with Saints, but I think this is even as as tough and as close. So. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, how interesting to be seeing it from both sides of sort of the divide. Yeah, uh, it's. I still live in Wigan as well, so got to be careful what I say and what I do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I obviously um, played at, at Wigan, and I've always been indebted to the club there for, for that opportunity. But my time here as Lee has been unbelievable, and for my development as coach as well, and relationships that we've created and what we're building here has, has been a real important time in my life. So, um, you know, I think in regards to the journey that this club, our club's on in this season after what we've done last year, it's, it's just a stepping stone. We want to, we've got a lot of goals set ahead of us of where we want to be and um, to be able to play, you know, a great club like Wigan so early on in the season as well as part of our journey is we're all excited too. And when you look at the numbers and tickets sold and and uh, the importance for this town, for the performance, I think it's, it, we could potentially break our, our record, our home ground attendance record. Uh, and that, what a great team club against to, to do it uh, against. How was squad looking this week? Any injuries, like early injuries? Uh, no, not, not too much. We've been okay in that area um, in the last couple of weeks. So, um, you know, we'll, it'll probably be roughly around the same, but we'll, we haven't, we won't train that often this week. I think there'll only be one captain's run session, so uh, it's short turnaround, so you know the, 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 we'll have to go with something similar. And Matthew, how's your squad looking? Yeah, similar. Uh, been quite fortunate recently, so yeah, it won't be too, won't be too, uh, too many changes. Who gets Joe Sharks this week? He's back with Wigan. Uh, <laughs> I guess we'll find it tomorrow within the 21 hour. Chris, is this the closest you've seen Lee and Wigan as, as clubs maybe on the field throughout your time in the game as both player and administrator? I think so. I think, uh, you know, I've obviously been, been around the game a long time and uh, you tend to probably get caught up week to week going to games and I'm not going to say in a rut, but you get caught with the, uh, the, the typical thing. This one just feels different. You know, I think... Uh, First of all, I, I agree with what Matty's saying about the style of rugby that, that, that Adrian team are playing, but 
you know what what Derek and uh, and Jukesy are doing here is really exciting for the sport as well. So, um, you know, when early on in the season I, I text Derek and I said, that, you know, that the sport needs disruptors. I think he's disrupting and doing things differently, and that has to be good for for where we're going as a sport. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to to, to Thursday night's game, but also the event and the hype building up to it. it just feels different, which has to be a good thing. How do you how do you like being called a, a disruptor, Derek? Is that the time of your life? <laughs> I've been called a lot worse, let me tell you. Uh, but no, I mean, you know, a lot of people think there's this massive rivalry between the clubs, and and, and you know, there is kind of from fans and things. But in terms of actual relationships, you know, it's really good and healthy. Um, I've always respected Wigan and what they do and, and what they stand for. All that my program notes this morning. You know, if you look at the the youth structure and the amount of players that they provide into the game, not just for their own club. It's something to aspire to have, um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's kind of just doing it our way, if you will. You know, the rebrand, the the whole sort of reimagining the sport that IMG are doing. Um, I guess you know, Lammy might look at it and he's, he supports what we're doing, but when he sees what it's cost at the end of the year and thinks I could have a marquee player instead of that, get rid of that music, you know. Um, but I just think it adds to the occasion. We want to make it special for players coming play in here. I said to Matty earlier, you know, when away teams come and play here, I want them to feel like they're coming and playing in a big game, a big event, like a final. Uh, and that's why we kind of put the shows that we're doing. You know, you're warming up in front of a live band, the, the anticipation building, the crowds are in, in big numbers before seven o'clock. Uh, well before the guys come out and warm up, so it's creating an event and an atmosphere that the players are the the pinnacle of, um, and hopefully we'll get a big crowd and uh, we'll get a good performance. You certainly look like the best shape you've been in on the field for, for years and years. I mean, is the room in the borough for two strong rugby league teams? Do you think? I hundred percent think so. Yeah, you know, um, you see it down at all, don't you? Um, you know, with what they've got, there's quite a cluster of clubs obviously around here, Warrington. Are equally as close and, and they're going well. Um, you know, we all know it's their year this year, don't we? Now, um, <laughs> so it's it, you know it, it's one of those things that um, you know we, we jokingly say you know where we can get. I think we benefit from a great facility. Um, <clears throat> it's obviously easier to fill uh, 11,000. We've not done that yet. I mean, the capacity is 9.8 now with the staging and some of the seats that it takes out. But we think that that's achievable and whereabouts you know this this town could be um and you know lammy says winning takes care of everything but it's the club off the field as well um you know so we've got more staff in there as a new guy started today uh neil's obviously an ex-coach ex-player um just on, on clubby uh, clubby uh, with lammy ex-player pj ex international player made all the welfare officer ex-player so we've got a lot of you know chris mellon as well the physio ex-player so We've got a lot of rugby people and detail in, in and around the club, and that's what helps Chesy. He's done a great job with his recruiting, and he's already on with uh, recruiting for next year. So we're now in a position where we can compete uh, and keep building and keep building. And, and you know, as much as we like to see we're going to be successful, uh, how good would it be if one day we got a, a Challenge Cup final that was Wigan Lee uh, or a grand final, you know, or a semi final in the playoffs? I just think. It'd be absolutely massive, you know. Um, last year we won the 1895 Cup and, and then watched Wigan win the Challenge Cup. I really enjoyed that day, you know. Um, how good would it be to have that 1895 Cup over this year to someone and then take part in the final of that, you know, what dreams are made of. But uh, hopefully one of us, if not both of us, will get there. The, the awful you can set a Super League record crowd on Thursday. I mean, lots of winners are in and it's got the makings of a big night, hasn't it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it will do that. Um, I've had more texts today for a ticket in the North Stand than, than I've had all week for everything combined on my phone. So um, I think a lot of people were trying to change the habits here. I mean, just talking to Rads, I won't give any numbers away there, but they've got heavy sales already for a game that's, you know, after ours with, with St. Helens because the demand over history is there. With ourselves, People are used to coming here on the day and just buying a ticket. There's never any real pressure of anything being sold out. So for the North Stand to sell out uh, the Saturday before the week of a game, that's significant. Um, Wigan have almost sold their end out. The centre of the West Stand's gone. We're well into the East Stand. So I'm fairly confident we'll, we'll get, uh, well, I'm pretty certain we'll beat 9,012. Uh, but I'd love to see it with every seat taken. 
Well, what have you made of your start for the season, Adrian? Three out of three wins out of six. Yeah, it's been okay. Uh, you know, we've we've recruited. Obviously, there's there's been a lot of change. I've been quite vocal with the fact that uh, there was, you know, round one was eight players making the debut, and out of that eight, seven were starting within that thirteen. So there's, it's going to take some time, but I think we're building slowly, um, and 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 combination between players is the key. So that's still going to take still, you know, another six games or so to get that to where it needs to be. So I'm going to be patient with that and just keep building with what we. How hard we're working. And what have you made of your starts this season, Matty? Uh, similar, okay. You know, I can see where we're building and I can see things that we're doing well and better than, than we were last year, but we yet to find some consistent fluency with the ball and that's that's proud for us. But uh, you know, the games we've got coming up, I think that sort of grit and determination is going to be the key factor, including this week. I think uh, that's, that's a great thing, a great uh, Foundation to build on, and something we're proud of at the moment, but certainly a lot of improvement in us. Have you been impressed with the way that uh, Lee have been going so far this season? Yeah, very impressed. And <clears throat> as, L as Lammy touched on there, I think uh, the more recent games, you can see what they're building. And I think the team always looked uh, impressive on paper, but you, you know, they're exactly right. It's going to take a bit of time to bed in. And I think, particularly the, f the, s the first half of the game against Hull the weekend, I think it's it's up there with any team's performance in Super League and uh, it's alright saying now that Hull weren't doing well but they, they were looking to build and it was the first time they'd been back at home so they'd have been determined and I think the uh, the speed of Lee's attack was uh, very impressive. Uh, Liam, you're a proud Wiganer, he's, he's having a, a strong uh, Lee Leopards uh, good thing for the Borough? Uh, yeah, I think he's it, it couldn't be any better for the Borough. I think having two teams in the uh, Wigan Lee area competing against each other um, is outstanding. Um, and come Thursday night, there's going to be households where there's people supporting Leeds, people supporting Wigan. It, it splits households. It, um, it's, it's just making for a real big game and coming here today. And it's already got a different feel than a normal week. Um, and yeah, it's one we're looking forward to. John, how have you found Super League and, and what have been the differences for you and the team from, from last year? Um, it's been it's been good. I think uh, uh, compared to championships, I think the skill level, um, the speed of the game is a, it's a lot quicker. Um, boys are a lot sharper. Um, uh, we had a pretty quality side last year and um, we played some really good footy. Uh, but this year's been a challenge. You know, obviously, Lemmy uh, touched on it before. We've got a lot of new faces and it's going to take a while to rebuild that. Um, but I think the foundation that we laid last year, um, we've kept that and it's something that um, we just got to make sure that you know the new players that are coming on board um, can sort of jump on and, and learn. There was a lot made of the camaraderie in the squad last year. Is it similar at the moment? Do you, do you see that uh, growing as well, getting stronger? Yeah, it's very similar to last year. Um, I think the, the new boys that have come in have really grown, um, have really sort of stepped up. A lot of them are very experienced players. Um, and they've been able to show their leadership, um, especially to some of the young guys that were here last year as well. So uh, those guys, haven't, we don't really look at them as new anymore uh, because of their experience and the level of quality you know, players they are. Um, it's been a lot easier for us to sort of gel and um, sort of get to know each other and what their strengths are. You'll have obviously heard of the, the Wigan name and the brand in Australia. I mean, what's it going to be like to, to face them on, on Thursday night? Yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, you know, Wigan's been a very good team for a very long time. I think the rivalry here can be just as good as what, what it was back home for, say, the Brisbane Broncos and the Cowboys back in 2015. So um, I think the squad that we have, we're, we're looking to challenge a lot of teams, and this is another test for us to, to make sure that we can you know, stick it with them. Liam, it's not a bad few weeks onto this rivalry this week, I mean, Saints, so it's been exciting time in the squad. Yeah, it just, it, it just adds another rivalry in there. Uh, like Matty said before, you look for certain fixtures throughout the year, Saints being one, but I think this is just up there as much. Um, you know, if you look at Lee as a team, you, you wouldn't think their team must just be promoted this year. But, you know, they're playing like a playoff team at the moment, so um, yeah, we'll take it one week at a time because, you know, we've got our hands full this week. I'm guessing you've had a few memories of playing here in this fixture, so what stands out to you when you when we come with a league crowd? Yeah, probably over the last four or five years, they've more, 
more been friendlies in pre-season, and even them games they've been fierce and intense and aggressive, and um, we expect just as much this week. But um, we'll, you know, we're playing against a real top quality team with um, a lot of international players, great standard players, and um, you know we're going to be on our, have to be on top of our game to you know try and get the win. It's not just the Battle of the Mirror this week, though, is it? You, you're linked to a charity, aren't you? Is one of you want to explain uh, what that's about? Um, I could probably just jump in on that. I'd just like to you know, obviously thank Wigan as well. It's a joint effort as well. Um, and with James Winterbottom and Paul McKibbit from the council, um, we really embrace the fact we're going to play them three times this year uh, and raise awareness. And, and Derek's mentioned it a few times, you know, the battles within the borough um, and the young curers who are going to be um, looking towards raising some funds. But it's not just about you know, the fan zone that's going on with the face painting and the people on the stilts and the activities for the young kids. Uh, it's not about you know just raising funds for that, it's about the awareness as well. So there'll be some young children um, who can only probably get here in about five minutes because they're actually at school and they're on the way to call Leah before they go and care for somebody. It might be a sibling, the grandmother or, or the mother and father. Um, so it's about raising awareness for that and trying to get some support um, for them as well. Um, so there'll be you know, quite a few numbers there in the East Stand with Nicola and a team who, who will, will get to come on Thursday night and, and watch the game and enjoy the atmosphere. Um, and again, hopefully they can return. Um, but, but generally, like I say, um, get some more bodies and some more awareness uh, and through our social and digital platforms through Wigan and ourselves, um, you know, to increase that. So it's, you know, it's brilliant. It's been a joint effort and um, you know, they'll battle for 80 minutes and then, you know, We'll, uh, we'll switch off and, and, and get the good comment out that we've got. I think as well, Trevor, it's, it's about, you know, there's a misconception from some people in Lee that they think, you know, Wigan's only about Wigan and doesn't really care about the Lee aspect of the Wigan and Lee. Um, and I think this is, this is a great example of how we can show that that's not the case, um, that we are supported in Lee uh, by Wigan Council and, and the things that they're prepared to do. And I think as clubs, um, you know, Wigan obviously have got football as well, but in Lee we only have uh, the rugby club and, and it's what provides the identity and puts us on the map, if you will, and, and really we need to show our responsibility to our community. So the bigger we can grow uh, and the more awareness we can give charities and the more help we can give uh, and the more funds we can raise for those charities to make our communities better places. So if by joining forces with Wigan, and doing it as, as two together gives you you know a better opportunity to reach more people and then when we go and play the return leg at Wigan likewise we can keep building and promoting and and focus on battles within our boroughs that every every borough and town faces and, and and when you know about them you want to try and help and do things you know we probably take it for granted I think I read in some of the uh, paperwork I was having a look at that you know, a lot of people, if they come and present to you as a group, you'll probably find someone in that group as inadvertently being a curer without maybe even realising that that's what they was doing, just because of what's fell on them as a responsible as a as a very young person, and they end up growing up quite quickly because they're the one taking all the responsibility in a in a household, and we just take a lot of this for granted. So, um, hopefully, we can uh, raise some good awareness for them. But there are people here from the charity who. Can probably tell you more about it as well. Neil, how how's the club grown on and off the field since you were head coach a few years ago? Back in the day. Back in the day. <laughs> Don't talk about that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's peaks and troughs, isn't there? With, with Lee, when you look at them as a club, um, it's you know I could sit here for hours, but you know you get the outside pressures of somebody saying you, uh, you know how you, how you manage your club and your youth systems and, and this. It's, it's difficult to really plan. So I think last year, if I'm being honest, we, Derek in particular, just we, we had to change our tact and we just had to go in with it, really. We had to recruit early. We had to plan on where it was going to be. Otherwise, you'd never get there. And if we always did, uh, we'd always kind of get what we was, which was what well, we didn't finish bottom in 2017. But So I think there's just been a real, and I'll, and I'll say this openly, you know, I think Derek's just led from the front and he said, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're at. And ultimately, you know, he's, he's got a big wallet. A lot of that would fall back on him as well. But I think you've got to get the right people, uh, whether that's in media, whether that's in rugby, whether that's off the field, or whether it's a CEO or a GM or a kit. You've got to get the right people. And I think one of the biggest things we did was get Adrian in and Chris Chester, Chris before Adrian. Uh, and then he got that. We've got Kieran Pirtle with, with our juniors now. So you speak about, um, you know, can we have two teams within the borough? And you look at all the young kids. We could only really 
access players who are not in scholarships. So we did a 14, 15, 16, 17 development days. We had to cap it at 80 outside of the people that are already at Warrington, St. Helens, Wigan and, and other clubs. It shows you a hotbed of rugby within this. Within this, um, Would Wigan and Saints at the moment probably have them best kids? Yes. But is there's, there's 80 kids there what we need to access, make them better people, make them better rugby players. So there's a short-term vision in regarding where we're going, but there's been a long strategy and a long-term one. Um, and, and it being steady away, you know, Aidan said building into it, uh, it's not all or nothing on one year, gradually getting better off the field, on the field and in each department. So, and touch on what Chris said, I think this week's a really different week, you know, as a coach and um, it felt different in that week we played beginning 17, home and away. Um, and this week feels different for me, just in my role as I do off the field, it feels really good, exciting. Can't wait to see the game, can't wait to see the atmosphere and the lottery winners and, and the fan zone and the kids and, and that's what we're doing it for, the community. So it's in a good place, uh, nothing's for granted, uh, but really looking forward and uh, as I say, I think there's a long-term strategy and, and we're crawling towards it. How exciting is it for you to have had such a long association with the club and there's been some pretty tough times. To, to hear talk like today, like Derek's even mentioned dreaming of the Challenge Cup final and things like that. It's been a long time since league fans. Yeah, it has. It has. So, and again, we you know with highs and lows and um, within that. But I think in life, even the bad experiences, sometimes you've got to go through it, and it makes you as a person and as a club and, and, and as an organisation, it makes you a bit more toughened, I suppose, and, and you, you can ride through that. Um, so, you know, ING coming in have, have probably set. You know, there's still probably a little bit of work to do in it. Um, but as a club, as I say, it's really exciting. So we've had some really good times, whether I was coaching or off the field, um, and we've had some really tough times and sleepless nights um, and made some really tough, tough decisions. Um, but you're better for it and, and you stick at it because you care about the club, you care about the community, which is a, a big one. And, um, you know, everybody gets in, involved in it, doesn't they? Obviously, family. And go back to Chris, really, back in probably 80s and 90s, you know, playing at Wigan St. Patrick's back in the day. But you've always kept that healthy relationship. Same with Matty. I know Matty, obviously, through the community days at Wigan St. Pat's and Faz. And so it's really good. I think it's it's one big borough. Um, it's game man, obviously, this week. But got so much respect uh, for people within it and, and clubs as a whole.